probably wouldn't be as happy. Uh, considering the way you felt about it in June, are you any better where he is and how far he's come and how far does he still have to go? I'm, uh, I'm a lot more encouraged today. We're, we're a lot farther ahead today than we were in June. So BJ gets a lot of credit for that. Uh, we're not where we need to be, period. But uh, he, he, he needs to get a lot of credit right now for, for taking some good steps. He's done a better job. Um, I, I'm a believer, strong believer, that he's a completely different player when he's not lugging around a nine-year-old on his back, uh, which he's done for two years. Uh, hard to play uh, when, you, when you're carrying that, that young guy around the whole game. He's got a chance to be really good. But for me, agility, quickness, uh, you know, uh, stamina, uh, it all changes with his conditioning and his weight. It's I'm, I'm encouraged right now. I am encouraged, but we're not we're not where we need to be just yet. We're getting there. Um, another transfer, Torin Dorn. When he became available, what did you like about him, and what do you want to see him work on during yeah. this season? Uh, you know, I think Torin is another one of those guys. If you go back to recruiting, now you can't take everybody. I mean, that's just the way the world works. Others, uh, but he was a guy that we liked as a high school player, and. Uh, you know, for a lot of different reasons, we didn't recruit him very hard. And uh, sometimes in recruiting, you're, you you make decisions and then you kind of look back and say, ooh, I may have, may have made a mistake there, or you know, I, I should have recruited that guy a little harder than I did. And you know, he was probably one of those guys uh, for our staff. And so, um, you know, I was excited when he wanted to transfer and he became available. And uh, I think this is gonna be like it has been for Ralston and then for Trevor. Uh, then for Terry, and then now for Torrin. You know, they've kind of passed the torch, you know, along each year. I think this becomes a really, really important year for Torrin. And, uh, you know, physically, he's already, I think, a pretty, you know, gifted guy as far as strength and quickness, but I still think he can really, really use uh, this year to, to take advantage of that for himself. I eventually think that he can be one of those guards that can play multiple positions, you know, play a little bit off the ball. And, and then play some with the ball in his hands as a big, strong point guard at times. And so we, we like we like what we have seen so far. We, we're really excited about utilizing this year and then really putting him in a position in the next couple of years where he can be a really uh, important piece for us. You talked a little bit earlier about how you're going to kind of fill the roles of uh, Walsh and Trevor. What does that mean for you? Um, I don't know that we cha we'll change a lot, to be honest. I mean, we, we kind of do what we do a little bit. I think we always find ways to adjust to our personnel. And I'll give you an example of that. I thought that, you know, we're, we're a team that runs the, you know, the traditional, you know, our bread and butter is the high post, you know, the old high post offense, although we, we feel like we have a new version. But, uh, you know, like last year's team, I'll give you an example with Cat and Trevor together. Uh, both those two guys were, were really good utilizing the ball screen and different things. And then we began to incorporate more and more of that into what we did as the season went on. And we tried to adjust to, to our players and to our personnel. So I've always felt like, you know, November and December is the time for you, or for me and our staff to really learn, you know, who really can do what at the level we need them to do it. And I think this year, if you look at, you know, Caleb and Cody, those two guys, obviously Terry, uh, Maverick and Sean Kirk, you know, on the perimeter, you know, how are we really going to play? And who's really going to be the guys? And how are we going to do that? And then, um, you know, inside, you know, there's there's B.J. Lennard and, and Malik, but then Cody may be a guy that can play a little bit as a um, kind of that odd size forward for us. Uh, so I think with our team this year, uh, November and December are, are critical for us to really learn how to play and how we need to play uh, as we get into January and figure out who on this team can do what. And we're going to learn for sure. You know, we think a guy might be able to do certain things, but you get in the game, it may not. And so uh, we'll learn some things about our team for sure. Half last year in the second half, 
obviously graduated to being consistently good, and Malik is kind of taking that same path to get to that point. How important are those two guys to be good at the same time on this year's team? Well, I mean, obviously, when your better players play at a high level consistently, your, your team's better. So that's, that's a given. Um, I have been really impressed with Cat probably more than anything with the way he has shot the ball this summer. And if you really go back and think last year, probably mid-year, you know, it's kind of like that Georgia Tech game on the road. And he jumps up and, you know, even I'm sitting over there saying, who is this guy? You know, he's confident. He's got great technique. Well, just shooting it, shooting the three well. And I thought the last half of the year and then this summer, I thought he kind of even went to another level. Now, I don't know that he's, he's ever going to be Scott Wood, but uh, he's a much more confident and efficient three-point shooter, which for Cat then changes everything for him because he's so quick and he's got great speed. And if we can continue to help him uh, improve his three-point shooting, all of a sudden he, he goes to another level. So, and I thought Malik kind of the same thing. You know, I think Malik about, took him about half the year to kind of get his, his feet underneath him and, and get settled in and uh, learn you know, what we were doing offensively or defensively. And I thought Malik took off to another level too. Now, you know, it's, it's that next year for Malik. Now, sophomore year, uh, I have much higher expectations for him now after being you know, in, the, in our system. And, but it's important for those guys. If we want to be a good team, those two guys have to play well. Well, I think there's just the natural, you're, you're just mature, uh, which he's done, a, he's, he's done a great job in that department. Uh, you know, I can say academically, responsibility-wise, just taking care of business, just the things when we all watch young people as young people, you know, sometimes each year you say, boy, that, that's impressive, this young guy, is, he's come a long way. And so, Cat uh, has been that guy, you know, where we've all seen it, it's very evident. You know, I think, you know, if you go back and think back through with Cat, you know, that first year Tyler was here and they shared minutes somewhat. And Cat at times was just kind of wild and, you know, young and just, you know, playing and, you know, just didn't really understand. And I thought last year had took big steps and big strides throughout the year. And so I think that we, you know, it's safe to say we're all expecting him to do the same this year. Uh, he needs to be a leader on this team. I think he's very capable of that now. Probably wasn't capable of that uh, as a sophomore or freshman, but now seems to be capable that he, he can accept that role differently than he would have a year ago. And uh, he needs to be that guy for our group. Coach, you mentioned this summer that Malik needed to step up offensively. How have you seen him improve in that respect? He's gotten better, you know, in our workouts. Now we'll see again when we start playing games. Uh, but I think fundamentally he's getting better and learning how to use the backboard a little more. Um, you know, trying to take shots and that are good high percentage shots for him outside of dunking the ball, which he's pretty good at that. But, you know, learning how to score the ball off the backboard, uh, take high, high percentage shots. I think he'll be a better foul shooter this year. Uh, and so we, we think he's, he's in a position to have a good year. You know, I don't know. Sometimes it's it's uh, it'd be nice for us to have a magic wand and you know and change guys' personality. Sometimes it's just not in your DNA. We're all you know we're we're all a little bit different. But I do think part of the deal with Cat is being comfortable, confident. Now he knows as an upperclassman, uh, he's going to carry the load more uh, than he did in the past. You know, even with the absence of Trevor Lacy. You know, because I think even at times last year when Cat was really good, he still could look over there and see that other guy over there that he knew could bail him out if he needed to in one way or another. Now, uh, you know, the responsibility rests a little bit more on his shoulders. But I think he's ready to handle that. I think, you know, I go back and I've played college basketball. I've been around college basketball a long time. And we all, you know, some kids matured 
differently than others, you know, and they kind of come into their own or become more confident at different times. I think Cat right now is, he's ready for that role, uh, and even verbally, uh, to be more vocal, I think he's ready for that. So, uh, we'll see. With, with Malik during the recruiting process and then here at NC State, you've seen him go through Ramadan, yep. I guess what, three summers in a row? Yep. Um, how's that? How do you see him handle that, and what does that say about his competitive desire to, yeah. to play through that? Yeah. I think with Malik, what's impressive, and the questions with, with Ramadan, he, he uh, I tell you what it shows me, it shows me discipline, uh, which I don't know that a lot of us could do. I'm not sure I could do that for that long. Uh, no water, no food from sun up to sun down, and you're working out and going to class, and, you know, you're having to do all the things you do, and that's that's a choice he's made. That's by choice, and so uh, it's impressive to me. And uh, you know, I thought the first summer prior to his freshman year, uh, he was uh, he was overwhelmed. You know, school is brand new to him. The amount of studies studying he has to do is brand new, and you know, it's all of that. And at the same time, we're working him out, lifting, we're running, and we're just you know, at the end of the day, you know, the guy's just completely whipped. And he lost some weight, and you know, this this summer he handled it much differently, much better. And, uh, but for me, I'm impressed every year because uh, it tells me how disciplined he is as a young person to do that and to do it the way he does. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really it's impressive. When you uh, talked about Sean Kirk earlier this summer, you talked about how raw he was and how far he had come. How far has he come in that time during the summer? And now that you've also brought in Maverick, who you didn't have at that time, how much more patient or how much, you know, does that allow you to, to kind of take your time with Sean? Well, I think with Sean, uh, honestly, I can, I don't know, you know, we, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can look up and see where him as a sophomore or junior, we kind of say, ooh, that guy's, he's getting pretty good. It may not be this year. But, but I don't know. It might be. I, you know, we'll see. I, I like I like a lot of things about him. But he is, you know, kind of a guy. He's, he's come from a small school environment, you know, much bigger stage, much better competition, and, you know, all those type things. Uh, I think skill, his skill set is going to get there. Maybe it's not there right now. But there's a lot of things to like about him. The fact 